Hello and welcome back to AJM Learn. So today I'm going to talk about padding and margin, um, something that is always confused in CSS. Um, even today I'm sometimes like, wait, was that margin or padding? So no shame if this is you. Um, still to this day, I have to kind of think on this one, although they are very different. Yeah, I don't know. They, they, they get confusing. So check out the article. There's uh, just I go into a lot of description on what they each are, examples of each. Um, so hopefully based on like between the visuals and the descriptions, the examples, there's a way of learning for every type of person so you can kind of get a better grasp. Um, but in the video, I want to show you, I also have a lot more information in the description of the video, um, but I want to show you just some of these examples I provided. So for padding, the first one, I talk a little bit about just a basic example of adding padding around uh, or inside of a button. So really quickly, I wanted to show you an example of that. So in the post, you'll see like nothing's happening yet, of course. Um, in the post, I noted that, you know, for Squarespace, of course, things are a little different. We have to target things using um, Squarespace selectors. You can check out our Squarespace CSS cheat sheet for more on that. But I've given you this one for just I ran just for buttons in general on Squarespace. Um, and we'll probably in this case want to target a specific button. Um, if you want to do this site wide, you would just do that in the, you know, in like in your site styles. So assuming we want to just target one button, remember uh, I've shown in some past posts how to find these block IDs. I love this um, Google extension. So I'm going to grab this block ID. So I'm just going to target this one button. You'll see nothing changes. Um, let me make the padding exaggerated so we can notice when it, when it does. Um, again, nothing's changing. I'll show you what's happening, but first I wanted to note, this is in the post as well, but these two values. So when I had the 20 picks and the 30 pixels, this is basically vertical padding, horizontal padding. So your padding and your margin, if you were to list all four like this, they go in the order of top right, middle, bottom. So basically clockwise starting at 12 o'clock. If you only have two of them, it's basically gonna be top and bottom, left and right. If you have one, it's gonna apply to, oops, all four sides. Um, okay, so why is it not working? Because this is already set somewhere on our site. So our CSS is like, we don't wanna do that. So the super fun and hacky important tag will help us with that. So you can see now it's working. So always remember when in doubt, add an important tag and it will probably make it work. Um, so one way, just an easy example to show uh, that example, to show what padding looks like. So again, it's that, it's that, that space between like, for example, here, the text and the edge of the button. So it's that internal spacing between elements within one thing. Um, this is not the most applicable example in the entire world, which is why I want to show you this other one. So more notes on this in the post, but what this is doing is this is targeting um, all EM is italics. So all italics on the webs on the site at the moment, which sometimes can work, I like to be a little more specific, but you can see this immediately targets this italic text I had. Um, you know, you can adjust the font size, whatever you need to do, but the padding is of course what we're looking at here. So this is creating this like pill shape. So I've told it the color to be the border radius, which is making it curved, the background color, uh, or sorry, yeah, text color, background color. This is actually cool. So font style normal, side note, basically saying I actually don't want it to be italic text. Um, I'm just using that for to target it, but I don't actually want it to look italic. So that's what's happening. But back to padding, um, you know, you can adjust as needed if you wanted this to be a little bigger, smaller, wider, whatever. So you can see this is adjusting your, like I mentioned before, your vertical padding and your horizontal padding. Um, if you want it to be the same all the way around, cool, just throw one in there. It, for buttons or anything resembling a button, you typically want two values, top and bottom, left and right. And of course you could put all four in there if you wanted to get crazy and like make this look insane. Uh, you can see that it applies differently to all sides. Cool. So that's one I use a lot for just like cool like eyebrow copy or to create almost like fake buttons. So really love using that one. Um, moving on to margin. To be honest, margin is, I don't use it a ton in CSS for Squarespace padding. I use all the time. Um, you'll find way more use cases, but 
the kind of ways I want to show margin, um, I'll just show you really quickly. So, okay, let me grab, for example, I had this square over here. I'll grab that block ID. Um, and I can just say, hey, I want the margin all the way around to be 40 pixels. So you're going to see it's going to jump. It's going to create that margin between itself and things beside it. Um, I don't see any real use case for that, but you can totally do it. Uh, something that I use or you'd probably use more commonly is you could just do margin bottom. And that would create more space toward the bottom. This is really more applicable. Let's see. Um, I don't know. Let's do like this accordion. Again, I don't have the use cases. It's one of those things that'll strike you when you need it. When you're like, wow, I really wish there was more space below this. So you could kind of force like way more space underneath an element if you needed it for some reason. Um, one way I used to use this a ton was on Squarespace 7.0 because we had less, uh, we just had way more restrictions. But I'll show you really quick anyway. So let's grab this block ID again. So margin left let's go margin left you can actually do negative margins so if you wanted to move this just a touch you can do it with a negative margin um this is useful you you always need to check it on like mobile and things and make sure it's because then of course it's not aligned with whatever else you have in this grid you know it is bringing it out of the grid a bit but since we are designing on a grid in squarespace 7.1 like fluid engine if you needed to tweak something just a little you can totally do that with a negative margin um if you need it to go to the left or right um and that's it. I uh, hope that helps clear up padding and margin. Again, you'll find padding in a lot of those like CSS hacks that we've written a lot that you find online. Um, margin, I find a little less common, but you'll find the use cases for that as well. Hope this helps.